This video will walk you through running and interpreting your logistic regression using Minitab. I'm using my same data set I've used in my previous two videos. This is the training example. So my dependent variable is employee satisfaction. You either get a 1 for satisfactory performance or a 0 for non-satisfactory performance. And I want to predict that based on the scores on two aptitude tests, tests 1 and test 2. So what I've done here is opened my first uh, mini tab worksheet. So I went to File and then Open Worksheets. And I had saved on my N drive, I had saved this mini tab worksheet. So that will be available to you for the examples we are going to do in class. So you'll be able to have access to those. Um, so to go ahead and run this analysis, it's really simple. I'm just going to go into Stat and then Regression, Binary Logistic Regression. Click in here, my response. Now it's kind of funky. Until I click into a, a cell, I don't have my data showing up, but as soon as I click into that cell, notice that that appeared. So my response is going to be my dependent variable, my group, whether or not they had satisfactory or unsatisfactory performance. So I'm going to hit select in there, skip the frequency, and just go down to model. Nice and simple. I want to predict group based on performance on test one. So click test one and select and then click test two and select. I'm not worried about any graphs um, or predictions. It's going to run some, you know, some analysis for me default anyway. So I just click OK and that's it. Now I'll scroll up to analyze my results that it gave me. Come on, scroll. Sorry, my touchpad is not very sensitive here. OK. So it performed a logistic regression. There were 43 observations in total. 23 of them fell into group one. That's saying that's the event. So that's going to be our P, our probability. And then 20 of them fell into group zero. So the probability there is going to be one minus P. OK, scroll down. Uh, then we have our predictors. We have our constant, which is, you know, interpreted as your beta zero. And then um, test one and test two, those are the betas on test one and test two. So my beta zero is negative 56. My beta one is 0.48. And my beta two is roughly 0.17. I can look at my p-values just as I did before to see if they're statistically significant. So I see that um, test one um, is statistically significant. Test two really isn't. Then I can look at my odds ratio. What my odds ratio is um, that says for each additional point scored on test one, the odds of a satisfactory performance measure, meaning the odds of falling into group one, increase by point by 1.62. So the way they get this odds ratio is actually the exponential of this uh, beta coefficient right there. So again, for each additional point scored on test one, the odds of falling into group one, in other words, in the odds of having a satisfactory performance rating, in, um, increased by 1.62. And then for test two, I'm going to interpret it even though uh, that setter is paribus. I'm going to interpret test two even though it's not statistically significant. Um, but for each additional point scored on test two, the um, odds of a satisfactory performance finding increase by 1.18 setter is paribus. Okay, then notice here how it says the test that all slopes are equal to zero and it gives a p-value. That's roughly the same as saying, you know, the F test, H, O, all of the independent variables together have no impact on our regression. And here we would reject H, O, so at least one of our independent variables does have an impact on our, our findings here. Um, oh. By the way, going back up here, I can also interpret these 95% confidence intervals. 
So for test one, I'm 95% confident that each additional point on test one increases my odds of having a satisfactory performance by one point by between 1.19 and 2.21 ceteris paribus. Um, so that's something else I, I can put in there to interpret. In the goodness of fit tests, we're going to talk about this last one, the HL test. Um, the HL test, HO, the predictions made by the model fit perfectly into the two groups. That's your HO. So we don't want to reject HO. So a non-significant P finding here is actually going to be really good for us. That's saying that we have a relatively, um, relatively strong finding here that this is, in fact, a good model to use. And then if I wanted to go ahead and make predictions, you could see those predictions made um, in the Excel video where we talk about that, actually using these to make the predictions. Um, remember, you're going to have to plug them back in to that logistic regression in order to solve for those individual probabilities. Okay, that did not stop recording. Hold on.